Correctly moving your arm underwater while you are swimming is like getting dressed in the dark. You can't really see what you're doing, so you end up just trying to guess at what's best. In freestyle, this underwater blindness most affects a series of movements at the beginning of each stroke known as the catch. The catch refers to the moment of the stroke in which a swimmer's arm is in its strongest position. In freestyle, this happens as soon as a swimmer's arm becomes vertical in the water. This position maximizes the surface area of the arm, allowing a swimmer to push harder against the water. Every swimmer has a catch in his or her stroke, but one of the things that can impact how well a swimmer can move forward in the water is to catch early in the stroke. The best swimmers catch water in the area directly in front of their shoulder. For the purposes of this article, we will refer to this area as the power zone. From the time a swimmer catches water until their arm leaves the power zone, a swimmer can create enough resistance against the surface area of their forearm that it actually anchors into position. This allows the swimmer to move their body forward instead of just pushing their arm backward. Both of these shots were taken when the swimmer's arm was in the power zone. The biggest difference in their technique involves how their arms are positioned in this zone. Swimmer A is not catching in the power zone. His elbow is slipping backward, which forces his arm into a horizontal position. This diminishes the surface area of his arm, greatly reducing his ability to apply force to the water. In contrast, swimmer B is catching in the power zone, giving his arm the greatest surface area in the strongest part of his stroke. This gives swimmer B two distinct advantages over swimmer A. One, catching in the power zone lets him engage the muscles in his back as if he were doing a pull-up. This anchors his arm into position so that he can pull his body toward and then past his arm. Two, catching in the power zone increases the amount of time he is able to keep his arm in a vertical position during his stroke. This combination increases the distance swimmer B is able to travel with every stroke and the speed he is able to travel. The best way to work on catching water in your power zone is to start off simple. Imagine your elbow as a hinge that allows your forearm to move from a horizontal to a vertical position in the water, just like a door opens and shuts. If you can hinge your arm while keeping your elbow in a stationary position in front of your shoulder, you will be catching in your power zone. The best way to learn to do this is to practice on dry land. Find a wall that is tall enough that you can fully extend your arms upwards. Stand against the wall so that your back, elbows, shoulders, and head are against the wall. Keep your elbows, shoulder, and head on the wall and hinge one of your arms so that your forearm enters a position roughly parallel to the floor. Hold that position for a moment and then return your arm to full extension on the wall. Practice this a couple times with both arms until you have a good feel for the movement. This is a great swim set to work into your routine once you have the hinging movement down. You should focus on hinging your arm and catching the water in your power zone. As you swim this set, pay close attention to your stroke count. It is a great indicator of how effective your strokes are. If you'd like help learning this drill, or are interested in learning more about your stroke, please visit us at Swim Lab Swim School. We'd love to help you learn to swim fast, faster.